This story begins with silence. A long silence that lasted 400 years. Four centuries of waiting to hear from the God we worshiped. God had not spoken. No prophet had given us a fresh word from him. No king had shown us the way to him. We prayed, offered our sacrifices, and kept festivals in holy days. But there'd only been silence and waiting. As we waited, our people looked to the ancient texts that told of another time of silence and waiting. And when there was a vast nothingness until a great word was spoken and his spirit moved. God creating and breathing life into the world. We looked to our ancient heroes of faith and the centuries of slavery in Egypt. We remember the night of our liberation when the death angel passed over. We relive the Red Sea crossing and are wandering in the wilderness when Jehovah was life. A succession of kings ruled over us. The more we turned away from them, putting God on the throne, the more desperately we needed him. Finally, our nation was destroyed. Not by enemies who conquered us, but by our own unfaithfulness to the one who had given us everything. Yet even in our destruction, God had promised we would not be forgotten. A son would be given. A savior would come. The silence would be broken and God would speak. Every longing and need, he would be met and his spirit breathe new life into our world. At last, the wait would be over. Every prophecy would be fulfilled. And the most amazing part is that the two of us would be chosen to help to bring it to pass. imagine that God would break his silence in the way he did or that Mary would bear 
hear his message from an angel's lips. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. The Spirit gave me the words to answer. At the very moment Joseph was weighing what to do about my situation, he would be told in a dream, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for and he, he shall, shall save his people from, from their, their sins. sins.
Caesar's decree came at the worst possible time. Mary was nearing the time to deliver her child. Our journey to Bethlehem to register was difficult for her. Everything that she had been called to do was difficult. Already she had endured scorn, mistrust, and danger. But when God called, he simply answered, yes. God had carried me through the nine months of being an outcast and the target of endless gossip. Faith had given me peace if Joseph ever doubted me. Faith had provided strength and courage as we traveled to Bethlehem. I had faith. I trusted God. Still, I will confess that there were moments I wondered about a God who would give such a task to someone like me. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, 
with a babe inside and I wonder what I've done Holy Father you have come and chosen me now to carry your son I am waiting in a silent prayer I am frightened by the Lord I bear in a world as cold as stone must I walk this path alone be with me now be Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place? But I offer all I am for the mercy of your plan help me be strong help me be help me breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of heaven Jesus came into the world in the exact way God had planned. In spite of the difficult circumstances, everything about him was perfect. Suddenly there were shepherds peering through the doorway of the stable. And when they saw the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, they fell to their knees before him and worshipped him.
Many years later, John would write, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mary and I were the first to see it. Then the shepherds who came in from the fields that night caught a glimpse. And ever since then, people have come to him. When they see him for who and what he truly is, they love him. For what would we have done if he had not come to us the way he did? Tears are falling, hearts are breaking. How we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting. Welcome, holy child. Welcome, holy child. I can think of no better way to reinforce what they gave us in song by what God gives us in the Word of God. So you'll find your place in Matthew chapter 1. You know the story, you know the text very, very well. And when I begin reading in verse number 18 and read down to verse number uh, 25 tonight, Matthew chapter 1, and look over in verse 18. Listen to what the Bible says, please. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. In other words, here's how it happened. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost." Listen carefully to verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from a sleep, did the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I want to preach very briefly tonight on this thought, a son, a savior, a salvation. A son, a savior, a salvation. Go in your mind, please, in your imagination back about 2,000 years ago when society was totally different than it is today. I mean, it was, I can think of no, no better difference than 
you know, no electricity, no internet. Can you imagine? No social media, no computers, no cars, no air conditioning, no microwaves. Can you imagine such a society? This was 2,000 years ago when things were way different. And what happened to Joseph, what happened to Mary, happened to nobody else ever. God chose them to uh, be, the, uh, be the, uh, the ones who would give birth to His only begotten Son. And, and not only is Joseph shocked by what he hears, he's also sad. And think about that. Here's his wife, his soon-to-be wife, the woman he loves with all of his heart. He's been told that she's going to have a baby, and it's not his. So the Bible says in verse 20 that Joseph, he, he thought on these things. And this is just to show you wives and you young people that when men think, they sleep. You see, our minds are so powerful, and our minds are always going, and when we think, it just wears us out, so we have to take a nap. So, ladies, when your husband's sleeping, he's really thinking. And young people, when your dad's taking a nap, leave him alone, he's thinking. Okay, so Joseph here, he's, he's, he's asleep and the, the Bible tells us he's dreaming and the angel shows up and, and the angel has this great, this great uh, thing for him to do, this great command, this great uh, bit of encouragement. And he says, the angel says this, Joseph, it's okay. Everything's going to be just fine. What's happening is all a part of my wonderful plan. It's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, Joseph, it's the greatest thing ever. Your fiancé, yes, she's pregnant, and it's not your baby, but the baby's been conceived by the Holy Ghost of God. And then the Bible gives Joseph three wonderful thoughts I want to share with you very quickly tonight. Notice number one, notice the birth of a son is announced. The birth of a son is announced. In verse 21, the Bible says, the angel speaking, it says, And she shall bring forth a son. And this son was born of a virgin. Look back in verse 22, or look ahead, please. Now all this was done, the Bible says, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, in other words, pay attention. What I'm going to say is very important. Behold, a virgin uh, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. It's no accident and no coincidence. The angel makes his announcement to Joseph, because it's been God's plan, I mentioned this this morning, it's been God's plan for this to happen this way from the foundation of the world. Joseph is shocked. Joseph is amazed. Joseph is like, wow. But God is, you know, I know what's happening. It's been happening. It's, I've known this for a long, long time. And even society and the year zero uh, has been known about this for 700 years. And Isaiah 7:14 tells us this prophecy. And this prophecy is fulfilled here in Matthew chapter 1. This birth, the son was born of a, of a virgin, thus proving and promoting and fulfilling the plan of God. Notice also, number two, the son was seen in a vision. Look at verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him Mary's wife. I thought about this. <clears throat> How could, or, or why, could, why could Joseph obey the Lord here? I mean, you put yourself in his shoes. He's been told that his fiance is going to have somebody else's baby, and he's been told this terrible news, so to speak, and... But the Bible says this, that Joseph, he obeys the angel and he does what the angel tells him to do. How is that? It's got to be this, that he has so much faith in what this angel says that although he cannot see this angel, uh, it's, it's in a dream, although it's not uh, a, a vision, he can more or less see with his own two eyes in this dream. He sees it just as if it's real. By the way, that's what faith is. Faith is believing and trusting something that you cannot see to the point. It's just like you see it. The son was seeing a vision. <clears throat> Joseph takes Mary to be his wife. The Bible tells us, and he knows her not until Jesus is born. Notice number two, the blessing of a Savior that is awesome. I love this part of the verse. The Bible says this, And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. Here in verse 21 and also in verse 
25, we notice that the name of Jesus is important. There's something very uh, peculiar in my mind about verse 21 and verse 25. Also in Luke chapter 1, verse 31, and Luke chapter 2, verse 21. If you'll notice, don't take time to look over in the book of Luke, but here in Matthew in verse 21 and verse 25, did you notice that the name Jesus, it's in all caps. Who texts out here? Most everybody. We all text. And when you want to text something or email something that's of super importance, you put it in all caps. And putting it in all caps makes it more important than if you just put it in not caps, in small letters. Capital letters are more important than regular letters, non-capital letters. And in being in all caps, it, it changes, it changes the, 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 the amount of importance. For instance, you could text your wife, I love you. You could text your wife, I love you in all caps. It means a whole lot more. Your kids text you and say, I passed algebra. Or if they put it in all caps, I passed algebra. It's more important, and we could go on and on, but here's the point. When something's in all caps, when it's capital letters, it's way more important than when it's in small letters. Did you notice here that the word Jesus in verse 21 and the word Jesus in verse 25, it's, all in, it's in all caps. It tells us just how important this name Jesus is. It's the most important name ever given. It's, in, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important name. It's also an imperative name. It's so imperative that it's the only name given among men whereby we must be saved. In Acts chapter 4, verse number 12. It is so imperative that it's the only name that in which every knee shall bow before and confess to the Lord in Philippians chapter 2. And it's so imperative, it's the only name you and I can call upon and be saved according to Romans chapter 10, verse number 13. The name Buddha is useless. The name Muhammad is useless. The name Mary is no good. The only name that matters, the only name that can save your soul and satisfy your heart is that of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, in all caps. It's important. It's imperative. And look, finally, number three, notice the benefit of a salvation that is amazing. The Bible says in the verse 21, For he, that's the Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. That one phrase tells me the great benefit of salvation is the fact that Jesus Christ, the reason he came, was not just to be seen. The reason he came was not just to do good works. However, he did do good works. The reason he came was not to do miracles, but he did do miracles. The reason he came was not so they'd write a book about him, but they did write a book about him. The reason he came was to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what's so amazing about salvation. Here's why it's amazing, because salvation, uh, it's, it's amazing because it's full would ask you tonight, how many of your sins has Jesus saved you from? Your answer is, all of them. Also, can I remind you this? The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that because of our sin, the wages for that sin is death. But the angel says, Joseph, Jesus, whom your wife is going to have, the baby, Jesus, he's going to save his people from their sins. It's so amazing because it's full. It's also so amazing because it's free. Free. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith. And of yourself, it's the gift of God. You don't give somebody a gift and say, Okay, that'll be $20. It's not a gift. Salvation gift is free. It was free to Joseph, it was free to Mary, it's free to you, it's free to me, it's free to the entire world. That's why Jesus came. That's what the choir sang about. God spoke to Mary, God spoke to Joseph, God speaks to us. Behold, the Bible says, Mary's going to have a baby, his name's going to be Jesus. So what do you think Joseph and Mary did? Mary had the baby, and she did call his name Jesus. And if you're saved tonight, he saved you from your sin. But if you're not saved, 
He can save you from you. I think the choir is going to sing another song in just a moment. Uh, but I'd ask you to bow your heads, please, and close your eyes. I want to ask you this important question tonight as the choir gets ready to sing one last song. Are you sure you're saved? This gift of eternal life only comes to us because of Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He went to the cross of Calvary and laid down his life so you and I might be set free. They put him in the grave. He rose from the grave, victorious over hell, death, and the grave. And the Bible says he ever lives today to make intercession for you and for me. And right now, the Lord's praying for us. I wonder, are you saved tonight? Saved. Not when the choir play, sings and the piano's playing in a moment. The altar's going to be open. I wouldn't invite you. If you need to come to the altar and pray, do it as they sing. We didn't know it, but wise, wealthy men would make their way to honor him. They would bring precious gifts to lay at his feet. Heaven's son was worthy of even more. He deserves everything we hold dear. So we let go of all we value, all we cling to. We lay down anything that would keep us from surrendering our lives to him. Because the truth is, he's the only treasure that really matters. Amen.